Uh, greetings to you all. Today I want to comment on God's earth. Previously, for many generations, um, centuries, uh, the earth was was um, depicted as a, a flat earth. Um, but since around, I think, the third century BC, a new uh, thesis was presented that basically the earth was a sphere. And uh, this is what we are now taught. And that it's uh, an earth that uh, spins or rotates or spins on its own. And that, um, and it's, um, it's roughly the rough, the round earth rotates around the sun and, and, and it uh, rotates anti, it, it spins on its own and it also uh, orbits, uh, rotates around the, uh, the sun, uh, east, is east, uh, east to west. Uh, its orbital path around the sun, um, on its ex axle tilt of about 23.4 degrees. And it achieves, according to this teaching, uh, some incredible sp uh, speeds that it spins on its axis or rotates it about, is it 1,600 kilometers uh, an hour? And, um, and that it revolves around the sun at a rate of 107,800 uh, kilometers. An hour now. These are horrendous speeds. Um, now, the what I want to present here is actually that uh, this doesn't make any sense to, to me. And uh, I go with the teaching of the Bible. The Bible, nowhere in the Bible does it actually say that uh, that the uh, the Earth is a sphere. But anyway, uh, I want to present that the Earth. Uh, the world, as it is portrayed, um, is uh, is like a, is like a saucer floating in an ocean, a large body of water, um, and uh, this large Earth is like a, shaped like a saucer that's flat, and um, and in that saucer, so is contained all the. Um, uh, there is the earth itself and it's surrounded by water. Um, nowadays we'll be talking about the Mediterranean specific, um, Atlantic oceans or scattered here, scattered here and there. Uh, but originally in the, in the beginning, the earth was like a huge continent, one landmass, which was all surrounded by water. And then we'll talk about the whole idea of a continental drift a little later on. Uh, anyway, do we continue that, um, is that, that this saucer like, um, dish, no, 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 it's more like a saucer, um, is actually, it's uh, the saucer is like um, it, the circumference of the saucer is raised on its around the edges or the ridge, or uh, to which a dome, which is made of physical material, uh, as we will see, um, sits snugly on this saucer like. Um, yeah, it fits snugly and is affixed to uh, to the saucer, and the Earth itself also is floating in an unseen uh, under 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 ocean uh, in an in an in an ocean, a large body of water, uh, in also uh, which is like in a sphere, half a sphere uh, dome, which. Um, goes right round and uh, it is comprised of water because the earth is actually floating in water. Um, and this is the system that, um, this is what was created by God, that the earth is actually um, a source that is uh, floating in water. And, uh, and this was the self-contained system um, that God made for Adam. So, but like I, I mentioned earlier, around the third century, it is said uh, that uh, some um, Greek um, astronomers established that the uh, Earth was roughly uh, 
a sphere, and uh, they even claim that they uh, calculated its uh, circumference. Um, now, coming back to, to the Bible now, uh, I just want to make a little distinguishing uh, point here that the the earth of Genesis 1, 2, and um, is different from the earth of Genesis 1, 1. Um, and the, the reason why I say this is because in Deuteronomy 32, point, uh, verse 4, it says that God is like a rock, and what he does is perfect, and he is always in, uh, fair, uh, is perfection. Uh, the Amplified trans, uh, Translation reads that uh, his work is perfect. Um, the works of God are perfect, another translation says. So basically what I'm saying is that what we see in Genesis uh, 1, 2 cannot be the original work. That was a destruction. It was brought to that state by because God was angry about something. Uh, about something. Uh, and uh, basically we are pointing to a previous age to the one that we are in. Um, on this point, we continue in Isaiah 40, 28, where it talks about, um, she's asking a question, and Isaiah is asking a question, surely you know, surely you've, uh, have you not heard that the Lord your God who lives forever, he's the one who created um, the, um, the whole, the world, the earth, um, and then it goes on to say that uh, God doesn't get tired and he's got no need to rest, uh, and we no one really understands his greatness and his great power and his great wisdom, um, because what he created, because as we will see, is really I think something that really defies uh, physics as man understands it. Um, in um, Proverbs twenty five three says uh, no one can no one can measure the height of the skies or the depth of the sea, so also no one can understand or examine the the mind or heart of a king. In Psalm twenty four one and two it reads the earth belongs to the Lord and everything in it, the world and all its people inhabitants. Um, he builds it on the waters and set established it on the rivers, so the underground river systems. So now we, this brings us to our Job 26.7, which is what we want to discuss. Um, it says here, he, he it is who spreads out the northern skies over emptiness and hangs the earth upon all over nothing. So it's a floating ball. Uh, other translations say that he spreads out the north over the uh, over empty space and suspends the earth over nothing. Um, I think he's talking about the whole sphere, the whole design, as we will come to see. And I think if I'm able to attach a picture and an old depiction of what happens is that there are there's a firmament. Um, which is talked about in Genesis, and then above it and around it, there's water which goes all the way right around forming a ball and also uh, encapsulates the, 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 the whole uh, earth um, for forming like uh, forming a ball from, uh, yes, uh, forming a ball right round of water. Um, on the top side, the water is around the firmament, and underneath, as it comes to the underside of the earth itself, it's just a body of water in a circular shape, like in a dome uh, facing upwards. It says in Job uh, 38, 4 and 7, um, these are questions that he's asking uh, Job. He says, uh, uh, where were you when I made the earth's foundation? Tell me, if you understand. Who marked off how big it should be? Surely you know. Who stretched a, a ruler across it? Um, so if you're talking about something that is stretched across it, we cannot be talking about a sphere. 
um, what are the Earth's foundations? Uh, yeah. What were the Earth's foundations set on, uh, or sunk in, or who put its cornerstone in place? So he's asking questions, to Job, about what do you know about what I've done, the marvelous works that I've done. You don't understand anything, so how can you question me? Uh, in Job 38, 18, it reads, do you understand how wide the earth is? So obviously it cannot be around. Um, um, it cannot be a sphere, in other, in, other, in other words, but although it's in, encased in a sphere shell. Um, it says, tell me if you know these things. So now I just, <clears throat> before we get into this, I just want to highlight a, um, some kind of uh, similarity between what is on earth and what is in in heaven. In Isaiah 14, 13 and 14, it reads, uh, he's talking about Lucifer. He says, uh, uh, you told yourself I will go up to heaven and ascend to the sky. I will put my throne above God's stars. Um, I will sit on the mountain of the gods, assembly, on the slopes of the sacred mountain or the north. So we also, this topology of that we see on earth seems to also exist in heaven. Um, zeroing in on uh, 14.3 says, um, the, the American Standard Version says, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Um, The the voice translation, okay, and then it continues, says, and I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the uttermost parts of the north. So there's a north in heaven, and uh, that is where God's uh, throne is, or his conference room is, where he holds his meetings with his, uh, with his servants. Um, the voice translation reads, uh, uh, remember how you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven, reach higher and with more power, and set my throne high above God's own stars. Now, these stars that we are talking about, we are talking about God's um, angels or other God's uh, people in that hierarchy that exists in, in, uh, in heaven. He wants to push himself higher than all of them. Um, this is what he's saying at the highest point in heaven. So he's actually claiming heaven for himself. Uh, in um, and this is um, and then in fourteen, chapter fourteen, fourteen, it reads, um, "I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the Most High." And uh, it says, "I will climb to heaven. I will set my throne above, over the stars of God. I will uh, run the assembly of angels that meets." on sacred man Zafin. So here we are, and then it continues, and I'll climb to the top of the clouds. Now the top of the clouds here is just saying um, the highest heaven, that's what he's saying, um, the highest point in heaven. So th this is the picture we have. So this is where our problems uh, began with this pride of uh, Satan. And then because of his desire to be to be the Most High God. Um, one translation actually says, um, he will be like God, which is what he says. I'll make myself like the Most High. Um, yes, I'll be like, in, actually, in other words, I think he is talking about displacing God and he is becoming the new God. Um, so this pride now is the source of the problems or the problems that we have here on earth. And because of that, he now wants to take over God's creation here on earth. Um, and because he's in opposition, he opposes God. Uh, Isaiah 5.20 captures his mentality, which is basically he wants to contradict everything that God does and says. So it, it reads, um, how terrible it will be for people. Woe to those 
who call good things bad and bad things good, uh, who think darkness is light and light is darkness, who think sour is sweet and sweet is sour. So now this is where we having these uh, ideologies and uh, these theses, uh, which are basically just to contradict everything that God says. So if God says the earth is flat, he is saying that no, it's round. That's the general thing. Uh, if God says something is good, he wants to say that it's uh, it's bad. And um, anything that God says, he wants to say the opposite. So now coming now to the actual, um, to Genesis um, chapter 1, verses 6 to 8, it talks about um, God said, let there be let there be something to divide the water in into a firmament dome expanse in the midst of the waters to separate, uh, divide the waters from the waters. The Amplified talks about uh, let there be a firmament, uh, an expanse of the sky in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters below from the waters above. Um, and um, the contemporary English Bible says, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate the waters from each other. So now he created this dome and half of the water, um, some of the water went over, uh, over, over the dome, was, is above the dome or around the, is above, yeah, the dome, the firmament is around the firmament. Uh, that's the waters that are above. Um, and then there are waters that are underneath, which are our oceans. And then there are also other waters uh, under the earth. Um, yes, so that, that's the picture we have. So this, this dome, this firmament is said basically, it's like, um, it's talked about here as the heavens or the sky. It's a canopy. It's a dome like um, half of a uh, of a sphere, uh, which is over the the earth, and it is regarded in the Bible as something that is. It's a tangible thing. It's not like an imaginary thing. It is actually tangible. It's solid. It's physical. Um, in in Job. 37, 18, he says, uh, you cannot stretch, you cannot stretch out the sky like God and make it look as hard as polished bronze. So the, this is a, it's a physical thing. It is just, no, it's not just air. No, there's air within the dome, but the dome itself is a physical thing. Um, the other translations, they talk about it uh, being as hard as a mirror that's made out of bronze. Uh, that's the uh, New International Reader's Version. The uh, New English Translation talks about um, solid as a mirror of molten uh, metal. Um, yes, and this, others talk about it as hard as the cast metal um, mirror. So, so the dome is actually a physical thing. And everything, the sun and everything is within the dome. It's, it's not outside the dome. Everything is self-contained. It's in this firmament, which is actually made of solid material. It's physical. It's not air. There is air within the dome, but the, the, the firmament itself, the structure, is actually of some material. Um, in, seven, in verse 7 now, it says, So God made the air... Um, talking about the the firmament, uh, the dome, the air within it, and everything, and place some of the waters above the air. We're talking about above the firmament and the below, which is our oceans. Um, and God made the dome uh, separate the waters under the dome from the waters above, uh, above the dome, and it happened. Um, <clears throat> The Lexham uh, translation says, So God made the vaulted dome and caused the separation between the waters which are under the vaulted dome, dome and between the waters which, which were over the vaulted dome. Uh, here, I think it's over, it's surrounding the, the firmament. Um, 
when they talk above, uh, it's over, it surrounds the firmament, um, forming a perfect circle right round um, of water. Um, in Edras, it says, again, on the second day, you created the spirit of the firmament and commanded it to divide and separate, separate waters so that one part might move upward and the other part remain underneath. In Proverbs 8, 27 to 28, now here we are talking about, uh, now this is a testimony from Jesus, and he's saying, I was there when God put the skies in place, established the heavens. Uh, when he stretched and uh, decreed the horizon over the oceans, the deep, when he made the clouds above and put the deep underground springs in place. Baruch, um, 2 Baruch 21, 4 reads, O you that have made the earth, hear me, that have fixed the firmament by the word and made firm the height of the heavens by the Spirit you have called from the beginning of, that you called from the beginning of the world, that which did not yet exist and they obey you. So now the firmament here is, uh, I think it's just emphasizing, emphasizing the, the physical structure. It's an actual, it's, it's made of physical material, of material. Uh, we talked about earlier, it's been likened to bronze, to brass, uh, but it's something that is hard and it's firm. Um, in Psalm 104, Verse 3 it reads, um, now th 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 this is another aspect to it. He says that, uh, who lays the beams of the upper chambers, of his upper chambers, in the waters above the firmament or surrounding around the firmament? Because I think phys uh, from a phys physics point of view, there may be a problem here of how can water adhere on a circular surface. Because if you talk about um, physics, I think you would basically say that it will all drip into, into outer space somehow. But there's this body, this band of water that is fixed, that adheres to the, to the uh, dome and around the, the underside of the, uh, of the earth. So anyway, he's saying here, basically, we're talking about um, that God's house, he says, who lays the beams of his upper uh, upper chambers in the waters above. So it rests on the dome uh, at the top end. And um, it continues, says, and he makes the clouds his chariots. Uh, it says, and he built, you built your rooms above the clouds. Um, yeah, so he built his rooms above, uh, above uh, the clouds. He's talking about he, above the firmament. In Isaiah 66, 1, it reads, and this is what the Lord says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. I think this captures it. So he's sitting right on top of um, uh, his structures are uh, resting on the, uh, the, the waters above. The firmament, um, as we saw earlier, that it's um, that his beams, um, the Ulysses beams, uh, in his of his upper chambers in the waters above the firmament. And now, this this design, this dome uh, sphere as architectural type, is also captured in. Ezekiel, it's an architectural the design of God, which says that now, um, over the heads of the living creatures, is someone who is having a vision, was something like a dome uh, that sparkled like ice, like crystal, and was awesome. Um, so this is the whole idea that this dome thing is also the, the rooms uh, the, in the, I think here they're obviously depicting a room um, up, uh, in the heavens, yeah, which has got this dome structure. 
So we are talking about physical, the, the topology, uh, I think, of heaven, as I indicated earlier, is like uh, the topology on earth is also found in heaven. And the architecture of this dome is uh, it's also found in buildings in, in heaven. Um, So it says, and we come to chapter, to verse 18, says, God named the firmament, the dome, uh, sky, heaven, evening passed, and morning came. This was the end of the second day. Then now we proceed into, uh, the, um, into Genesis 1 9. And it says, um, it says, uh, let the water under the sky be gathered together so that dry land appears. Um, and God said, let the waters under the heavens be collected into one place uh, of standing water and let the dry land appear. Um, this is the point that I was making earlier on. Um, the voice translation, okay, the, the New American Bible uh, reads, uh, then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land would appear. So here we are having this whole idea of an one huge continent island that is surrounded by water all around. And so it happened that the water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared into its basin and dry land appeared. Um, the voice translation reads, um, let the waters below the heavens be collected into one place and congregate into one vast sea so that dry land may appear. So this whole idea is that we have, there was supposed to be just one land mass, which one huge continent. Um, And then, of course, I, the dry land that emerged, he called uh, the earth and the waters, uh, he called the sea. Um, and then the contemporary English translation for verse Genesis 1.10 says, God named the dry land, uh, dry ground, um, land and he named the water ocean singular um, and then the easy translation reads and he called the water that had come together sea so this is the singular it's it's not many oceans it's just one ocean that uh, surrounds the whole land mass the island of uh, earth um, and the New American Bible uh, reads, and God called the dry land earth and the basin of water he called sea. So now, here now comes the whole idea of uh, the, that over the centuries there's been a, a drifting. Um, the earth started breaking up and drifting away from the original um, oneness. Um, and uh, this theory of continental drift comes into play, and this was ex this was um, popularized um, in the early part of the 20th century, uh, when scientists begin to put together evidence that the continents uh, could move around on Earth's surface. The evidence is uh, for continental drift included. Um, the fit of the continents that they, if you can, if you bring them together, they can actually they fit in, snugly into each other. And uh, then they saw the distribution of uh, ancient fossils, rocks, and mountain ranges that are found, let's say, in America, which are also found in Africa, um, and a whole lot of evidence. But this is the whole idea of a continental drift. So this Earth was is originally just one landmass. Um, So, this is, a, it's, it's one land, flat, uh, land mass. It's in a, it's like in a, in a source of the earth. It's got mountain ranges, but it is flat. It may be, um, the, the whole basin 
may be or disc may be circular as evidenced by this shape uh, the dome um but the earth itself is uh, is flat it, it it is not circular it's not spinning around it's some incredible space uh, speed around the sun because actually the sun is within the dome now talking about com uh, being that what it, that the earth is uh, is in water and uh, is resting in water floating in water and um, the, the 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 dome is surrounded by water um, this is what 2 peter 3 5 6 says but they do not want to remember or woefully forget ignore what happened long ago by the word of god uh, heaven was made and the earth was made from water and with water. Um, it, it emerged out of water and it sits and is surrounded by water and the whole disk is in water. So, um, yes, so it's it, it said that, um, yeah, the earth was made from water. It emerged out of water, and um, the, here we are talking about Genesis uh, one two onwards. Um, the the complete Jewish Bible says, by wanting so much to be right uh, about this, they overlooked the fact that it was God's word that long ago there were heavens and there was land. Uh, which arose out of water and existed between the waters. Yes, the waters above and surrounding it. Psalm 33, 7 reads, uh, He gathered the water of the sea into a heap um, and he made the great ocean stay in its place. Um, basically, that the earth would not be, of, would not be flooded. Uh, where well, he made a promise that it will not be flooded again, but it was flooded in, uh, the, the result of it was in Genesis uh, 1 2. Then he says, um, Psalm 136 6 says, he, um, he spread out the earth on the seas, um, and his love, uh, loyalty continues forever. And he built uh, Psalm 24. Two reads, he built it on the waters and set, established it on the rivers. So here we're also talking about the, the in the earth, the underground uh, river systems. God claims um, he's the one who pushed this, the oceans back to let dry land appear. The whole idea of it coming out of a um, out of the uh, out of the water, and you took some of the water and you put it above, uh, because I think there was too much water, and some of it um, stayed remained and are surrounding the the earth and also under the earth. Um, in two Edras sixteen fifty seven to fifty nine, it reads. Um, at his word, the stars were fixed in their place, and he knows the number of the stars. He searches the abyss and its treasures. He has measured the sea and its contents. He has confined the sea in the midst of the waters, and by his word, he has suspended the earth over the water. Over the water. Um, Now, having said that, I just want to 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 add a few other things. Um, in two address four seven to eight, it reads, um, and he said to me, "If I had asked you how many dwellings are in the heart of the sea." or how many streams are at the source of the deep, or how many streams are above the firmament, or which are the exits of Hades, or which are the entrances of paradise. Entrances of paradise. Perhaps you would have um, 
Perhaps you would have said to me, I never went down into the deep, nor as yet into Hades, neither did I ascend to heaven. And it's true. So there are lots of things that we don't know. But um, here now I want to um, talk about the underworld, sure, that there is a place in underworld, uh, um, under the which I think it's usually captured as under the earth or it's in the earth, um, but it's down deep there. There's a place um, he talks about here, says, um, do you know what are the, the exits of Hades or which are the entrances? There's a place under, there's a world underneath uh, in this in the earth. And I think this is captured quite clearly in, uh, in the case of uh, Lazarus, uh, the poor man and the rich man. Uh, that's in Luke 16, 22, 27. It says um, that, uh, you know, this um, this rich man who totally despised the poor and would not give Lazarus anything to eat. Anyway, eventually they both died. And, um, and um, so Lazarus ended up um, in the place... Um, in the arms of Abraham and the rich man. Um, the rich man died and he was buried in the place of the dead, Sheol, uh, Hades, and he was in much pain. And then now they're talking about this. And um, let me go back and warn my brothers that this place is not very, uh, no, it's not very pleasant. And um, God said, no, 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 have, you have your prophets there. Um, um, you're not going anywhere. But the, what he's basically saying here, the point that I want to point here, uh, make here is that uh, he talks about there was a big pit or great gulf or chasm, chasm set between where Lazarus was, which is he calls paradise, um, and the place called Hades, which is um, Hades, which is like like hell, although it's a, it's a holding place. Um, so there are, two, there are two dimensions, two compartments there. One cannot move from one place to the other. Um, I think the paradise will be the equivalent uh, of purgatory. It's a holding place, and in purgatory. There, there is, there is hope. Yes, uh, there are things that you are going to be taught whilst you are there. Because I don't imagine that they are sleeping from the time from twenty centuries ago uh, to this day. I think there, uh, there is some form of instruction that goes uh, takes place there. And um, if I may share a, a, a dream I had when uh, someone close to me passed away. I, after he had passed away, I saw, saw him in a vision and he, there's like a preliminary hearing or, uh, shall we say, an assessment or, uh, yeah, a, an assessment that takes place where God starts asking this person, um, in this particular dream, he has been actually asked, um, he was asked three questions. The first time, the first question he was asked, he was able to put together some kind of explanation. By the time he came to the second um, uh, question, he was fumbling and uh, uh, waffling. By the third, he was quiet. Um, but someone else had another vision about uh, what was going on in the same thing. And it looked like this person had ended up with his father, who was now tutoring him on the things that he needed or he needed to learn. So there is some kind of instruction that takes place there. Um, but anyway, they, I'm not putting it as a doctrine, but there are two dimensions. There are those who I think judgment or preliminary uh, hearing suggests that um, that the thing is open, 
and the judgment will be passed at a later stage and uh, you are going to be there awaiting the final judgment whether you go to the lake of fire and brimstone and the ones in purgatory they are going to just get by get out by the skin of their teeth somehow i think that's god's mercy um but they are not in the same place and also neither are they in the same place as we see here in 2 Peter 2, 4 in the underworld where they are saying uh, when the angels sinned, uh, God did not let them go free without punishment, but he sent them to hell. I think this hell may be different from the one we are talking about of uh, the rich man, uh, Tatras, because he is talking about his angels, um, but he's put them in caves, he says, of darkness where they'll be held uh, for judgment. So the, the, these ones have already been judged and the outcome is, is, is hell. Um, in Jude 6, he talks about the same thing. Um, they talk about those angels who, um, who did not keep their place of power or authority or their own domain, but had left their proper home. Uh, the Lord has put this place in a place of darkness and gloom. He's talking about what Peter is talking, he touches here. And then in 1 Peter 3, 19 uh, to 20, it says, um, talking about the same in our here, I don't know what the, the, the spirits says that he went when he, after he, uh, he died on the cross, he descended in his spirit. This is, we're talking about, uh, Yeshaya. And he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Um, and here I, I like to think that he's probably talking about the fallen angels. Now, I think basically he was going there to tell them, look, it's done now. You, yeah. Um, I've, I've done what I needed to do. Mankind is saved. You wanted to kill them, but, um, they are saved. Uh, I'm their salvation. His great work. So they know that he died to save mankind. So I think this is what the message that he was teaching them. He, he was letting them know that's what had happened, uh, that he's, he's, he's victorious and he's conquered death. Uh, the people, the people, human men can that need not fear about death anymore. However, they have much to fear. Um, the message translation says, and he went and pro uh, proclaimed God's salvation. Uh, to he, this, he talks about earlier generations and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not convinced. I think it's probably because here we are talking about prison as opposed to Hades. Uh, there's a prison. These, these ones are, are people who are imprisoned. So in Revelation 5, 3 and 13, it reads, but there was no one in heaven or in earth or under the earth who could open the scroll to look inside it. So these are the three domains that we're talking about. The earth, the heavens, where the second heavens, where all these other uh, fallen angels are at present uh, until they're kicked out or they've already been kicked down to earth. And then it, in 13 it reads, Then I heard all creatures in heaven and on earth and under the sea, under the earth and in the sea, and in the sea, yeah, there are creatures in the sea, say to the one who sits on the throne and on the Lamb, and to the Lamb be praise of all blessing and honor and glory and power forever and ever. So all are going to bow before him. He is the Lord of over everything. And then he says, Job 9, 6 reads, he shakes the earth out of its place and makes its foundation pillars tremble. Um, Philippians 2.10 reads, So that every knee shall bow to the name of Jesus, everyone in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and in the sea. And uh, this is just basically, I was just trying to um, emphasize the point that, uh, that the world is not a sphere, and it is not spinning around as we are led to believe, but is actually flat and it hangs on nothing and we are totally encased 
in a, by a firmament and water around the whole fir, uh, of uh, the, the whole circumference of the ball sphere, which is just hanging upon nothing and is not rotating around anything. All the, the things, the sky and everything, the moon, they're all in the heavens above. Um, they are in the firmament. They are not outside. Um, so the, these things, they are rotating. They have their circuits within the firmament, but the earth itself is not, is not, um, is not moving at all. It's the, the sun is the one that is doing it and the moon that do their circuits within it. And this is just basically saying this is one truth which Babylon obviously wants to replace with a lie. Um, to move away from the whole concept, uh, conception that the earth is actually, is a flat, it's flat, it's not, it's not a sphere. Uh, otherwise, I don't know how dizzy it would be if we were spinning at the horrendous speeds that they are talking about, how planes would land and take off if we were spinning, and how is it not that if we were spinning so fast around this, this, the sun, Run around the sun. Why? How would the day last twelve hours if you are spinning at that speed and rotating around the sun? It will, it will be just crazy. You'll be in and out of darkness. I don't know what state that would be. But anyway, the, uh, the, the point I just wanted to make is that the the Earth is not a sphere, as we are being taught. It is flat, as the Bible says, and it hangs on nothing, and that there's water that adheres to the. Uh, a circumference of the firmament, which continues as a, as a belt of water going, going all the way around and enveloping even the earth and uh, forming the under, underwater oceans, ocean or body of water, which is under the ocean. I hope I'll be able to uh, uplift, uh, to, yeah, to, to paste the picture of this conception of the earth. And on that point, I'd like to, uh, consider um, to, this takes us to our introspection and meditation uh, which is uh, Revelation chapter 10 verses 8 to 11 and it reads then I heard the same voice from heaven again saying to me go and take um, the open scroll that is in the hand of the angel that is standing on the sea and on the land so I went to the angel and told him to give me the small scroll and he said to me, take the scroll and eat it, a symbol of internalizing the word. It will be sour, bitter in your stomach because, because it is a message of judgment. But in your mouth it will be sweet as honey because it is God's word and because it brings salvation and vindication to his people. So I took the small scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. In my mouth it tasted sweet as honey, but after I ate it, it was sour bitter in my stomach. Then I was told, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. You must share the word you have just received. Um, then I did the contemporary English version for the last verse reads, then some voices said, Keep on telling what will happen to the people of many nations, races, and languages, and also to kings. And our benediction comes out of Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27, again from the expanded translation, and it reads, The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you should bless the Yashaelites, the children of Yashael. Um, say to them, May the Lord bless you, and keep you. May the Lord guard you. May the Lord show you his kindness, make his face shine upon you, and have mercy on you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord watch over, over you, lift his face, presence, countenance upon you, and give you peace. So Aaron and his sons will bless the Israelites with my name, put my name upon um, the sons of Yashael, and I will bless them. Thank you, and may God bless you all.